Can we have the choir come up, please? Everyone help us sing tonight.
freedom is. Mighty Lord behind the cross is. Yeah. And preacher's Lord will not see it. Who else says you love it? Oh, how precious, Lord God. Thank you again. So we ask these favors in your name. Amen. Thank you, Steve. You may be seated. Number four.
again. Well, we want to welcome you again to Tri-State Baptist Temple, and we are uh, looking forward again tonight to be able to hear from God's Word, be able to uh, just have the Lord speak to our hearts and uh, uh, just uh, encourage us and give us direction in our lives, and I'm excited uh, tonight. Uh, we just thank everyone for being here again today. We just encourage you to continue to pray for our meeting uh, tonight and uh, through Wednesday, continue to invite uh, friends and family members and uh, uh, we have, it's a holiday today, so maybe there are some who are uh, with doing different activities. We want to encourage uh, more people and then family and friends as well to come back tomorrow and come Wednesday and uh, just be here to hear uh, and see the things that God's uh, doing with us. And so we're excited about that. Just remind you again that of our, about our new uh, fall Bible club, uh, the King's Army, and we're looking forward to that. Philip was sending me more stuff last night, uh, uh, different uh, pictures he was making up and things, and uh, it's just looking really nice, and we're excited about that, so we hope uh, we'll have as many as we can to come and help us with that. Uh, it'll be starting next Wednesday, and then also just remind our Sunday school workers that we'll have a meeting on Wednesday, uh, this Wednesday at 6.30, and that'll be important as well uh, for Pastor to give us some information, some things that he wants us to do uh, throughout the rest of the month, and so we just want to remind you about those things, but uh, we'll uh, go ahead and ask our ushers to come. We'll take up an offering tonight, and this offering will be a love offering for Dr. Sanders, and so uh, anything you give right now will go towards him, his ministry, and so uh, we just want to uh, let you know that and encourage you to give uh, for the man that God has given us to preach this week, uh, but let's pray tonight. Amen. Again, just want to say thanks for being here tonight. God bless you for coming out. And uh, this weekend, of course, kind of the last, uh, the last holiday weekend before uh, things really settle in. And I know we probably had some families and folks out of town making the most out of a long weekend. And so we're praying uh, now the remaining part of this week and the whole month of September, uh, we'll just round back up and get back into church and. Uh, be faithful to our regular services and special meetings. And uh, don't forget, if you didn't get a Roundup packet for your family that gives you some information and just some things you can do to help uh, round up your own life and family uh, through the month of September, we have some of those packets right up here. Be sure to get one of them and take it home. And there's some information, things in here for you to read and some things that you can do to participate in that. And I uh, hope you'll be encouraged to do that. Also, Brother uh, Sanders gave us uh, Sunday morning a handout. Uh, it has some visual illustrations in it. It was called the Pictures of the Stages of Man. And if you didn't get one of those, there are a few back here on the table uh, as you come in the back door. There's some uh, there now. And if you'd like one, you can get one. And that's uh, great illustrations there of what he's been preaching about, about the abundant life. And uh, so I hope you'll get it and uh, be a blessing to have that. And you can use it, put it in your Bible, and uh, use it uh, throughout uh, your, uh, the rest of the week, plus just on your own study. It'd be good to have that, to remind you of that. And uh, we are looking forward to having uh, just a great finish to our uh, revival meeting. And uh, Wednesday night, of course, we're going to have a special meeting at 6.30 for all of our Sunday school workers and if you help in any age of Sunday school, uh, we want you to be there because we have some special material for you that we're going to be giving you, and that's what you'll be using throughout the remaining part of September through our mission revival. And uh, we've got some things in there we want you to have and, and uh, some materials that we want you to pass out in your classes. And uh, for all of you uh, youth and children's 
uh, age teachers, we have a couple projects that we want you to do with your classes. And uh, if we get all of our students participating in that, it'll give us some good displays that we can put on display for our mission revival, as well as uh, some, uh, some essays. We love to get, especially the older kids and uh, teens to write essays uh, about some scriptural truth concerning missions and uh, just begin to get those truths in their heart and life to form a foundation for the future. And uh, so we hope that you'll be sure to be there Wednesday evening at 6.30. Well, in just a few minutes, uh, Brother Sanders is going to come and preach for us. We've got a special song tonight that uh, we're going to have, another special, some special singing. We've had some great special music already. What a blessing. Everything we've had has been right in our church and uh, how blessed we are to have that. Uh, but we've got uh, a special tonight by uh, Mr. Landon Griffin. So he's going to come. He's going to sing for us tonight, and then we'll get Brother Sanders to come up and preach for us. Amen. There are certain songs that I, ever since that I've heard them, I have been blessed by them, and, and that is one of those songs that is a blessing to my heart. It is, a, it is sort of a blessing in two ways. One aspect of the way that it is a blessing, it just has one of, to me, has one of the most pleasant melodies that a song, uh, that a lot of songs have. And I, I find myself uh, after maybe a service like this for three or four days, I'll find myself humming or whistling or, because it has just a sweet melody to it. But then as you contemplate upon the words, here am I, Lord, send me. And uh, may I say that uh, that should be our heart's desire, is that uh, we would be available to whatever God wants for our hearts and our lives. I, I know uh, from my own personal experience, I know that a lot of times that when God begins to deal with our hearts, He begins to woo us into some special avenue, uh, there is a certain amount of apprehension. I, I, I've experienced that. But may I say what I, have, what I have discovered is on the other side, in obedience, may I say the rewards far outweigh any of the apprehension that I previously had. Uh, may I say I would not as uh, I battle when God began to deal with my heart and my life about uh, preaching. Uh, I, uh, it was like a warfare that took place within my heart, within my bosom. 
But may I say on this side of obedience, I cannot imagine doing anything else. Nor would I trade places with anybody else. uh, Because I know the peace and I know the victory and the blessings that are ours when we are in obedience to what God wants us to do in our life. And let me just sort of inject this. I, I, I don't know maybe why it ought to be said, but may I say, uh, I, 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 when it comes to the idea of the call of God on our lives, may I say there's no big calls and little calls on, on our lives. It's, it's whatever God calls you to do, whatever, whether it be as a, as a preacher, a missionary, a Sunday school teacher, a a worker in the choir, a singer, a, a full-time mom, whatever it is, whatever that will of God is for your life, you can have no greater rewards than just being what God wanted you to be in your heart and your life. I never will forget, I, I was preaching down in Louisiana on a particular Bible character and magnifying his service for the Lord and uh, there's a lady that was in the church that I'm very familiar with, friends with. And uh, she was having a rough week. Uh, I think at that time she had five children. And uh, one or two of them were sick and she was sick and she's trying to make the meeting and whatever. And uh, she didn't tell me, but she tell, told one person in the church uh, and named this Bible character and said, everybody can't be one of them. And uh, a little later on, uh, we talked, and, and uh, she has discovered that whatever it is God wants you to be, whatever it is, His will for your life, you, you'd be out of place anywhere else. And, but it is, the, it is the attitude of our heart. Here am I. Lord, whatever you want, whatever you desire, wherever you want me to go, I want to be where you want me to be. And that, uh, that should be our heart's desire. And I certainly appreciate uh, the young man that sung tonight. Appreciate the special music. The, uh, I wanted to say, would you call that an ensemble? I guess we could say the ensemble. I enjoyed it. Enjoyed all the special music, the choir. and uh, Y'all have done just a great job. And I appreciate the message and song tonight. If you will, I'm going to have you go ahead and open your Bible to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 26, if you will. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 26. And if you'll permit me, I want to read our text verse that is found in John chapter number 10 and verse number 10. And for you that have not been with us in these days of meeting, we have been trying to magnify the idea of the abundant Christian life. And we have been pointing out, I made this comment, while it is not the only type of life that the saints live, abundant life is the only type the Savior gives. He he only imparts one type of life. We must choose whether or not we want to enjoy. It is our birthright. It is, it is not obtained by us and neither is it maintained by us. But it is given to us because of the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. Notice in, let me read this verse. It's found in John chapter number 10, verse 10. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Uh, Let's pray. Our gracious and most kind uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, for the privilege and the honor of being able to be in the service tonight. Father, I, I thank you already for what I sense is the sweetness of your spirit already here in the service. I thank you for every song that has been played and sung. And Lord, I thank you for the privilege of being able to go around and shake hands and fellowship with the people of God and live out that principle of truth. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples because you have love one for another. 
Thank you for what we have sensed in this place tonight. But Lord, I ask in just a matter of moments as we enter into the preaching of the Word of God, illuminate our minds, our thoughts, empower us with the sweet Spirit of God. Give us ears to hear, not be just hearers only, but doers of the Word of God. And We'll love you and thank you and praise you for all that you're doing, for we ask it in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen. On Sunday morning, we tried to lay our groundwork for the truth of this abundant life. And as I pointed out, while so many times it is difficult to come up with a definition, it is easy to see by illustration what is this abundant life that God has saved us to enjoy. May I say, as God fills us and indwelled us, The Bible teaches that greater is He that's in you than He that's in the world. May I say when we are enjoying that abundant life, it is a life that we find ourselves attacked by the world, the flesh, and the devil. And that that activity seems to puncture our lives. May I say, they do not run in, but God runs out. And in that abundant life, it is not our surroundings that are affecting us, but It is us affecting everything around us. On Sunday night we began and we pointed out that we have found for ourselves four distinct illustrations of this abundant life. Last night as we looked in the Word of God, we looked at life in His flock. We saw that shepherd and sheep relationship and how that in that that life in His flock, it is a life of companionship. I'm glad that we've not been saved and just sort of cast out there and and, and given the hope that one day we'll see God again. But I'm glad that we have a hope that teaches us that He walks with us and He talks with us. And the Bible teaches, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. There's a communication, there's a course, and there's a comfort in this companionship with God. But notice, if you will, tonight, there where you are in the book of Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter number 26, notice that not only do we have life in His flock, but we have life in His favor. May I say we enjoy a life of companionship. But may I say with life in His favor, we enjoy life in a country. Notice if you will here in verse number 7 of chapter number 26. The Bible said, And then we cried unto the Lord God of our fathers. The Lord heard our voice and looked upon our afflictions and our labor and our oppression. And the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt with a mighty hand and with, a, and with an outstretched arm, and with great terror, Melissa, and with signs, and with wonders. Now notice this. And He had brought us unto this place, and had given us this land, even a land that floweth with milk and honey. Look at verse number 15. Look down thy uh, 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 look down from thy holy habitation from heaven and bless thy people Israel and the land which thou hast given us uh, as thou swearest uh, unto, unto our fathers uh, a land that floweth uh, with milk and honey. Notice uh, uh, there in verse number 9 and also verse number 15 notice uh, that we have been given the promise uh, of a country. Notice it says uh, He hath given unto us this place. uh, And it says He hath given us this land. Uh, In other words, uh, uh, notice uh, that this country that I'm talking about has been prepared and has been given to us uh, by God Himself. May I say when I'm speaking of this country, I'm talking about Uh, There is a country, there is a a spiritual state uh, that we can enjoy uh, as the people of God uh, and it is in that spiritual state uh, that we can enjoy the abundance of this Christian life. 
Notice, if you will, some three or four things about this country. Notice, first of all, uh, the promise of this country. Now, trust my reading, but write the reference down, if you will. It's found in in the book of Genesis, uh, chapter number 13 and verse uh, number 11 uh, through verse uh, number 17. You know the story there of where Abraham now has been separated uh, from his nephew Lot. Lot has lifted up his eyes and beheld the well-watered plains there before Sodom and Gomorrah. And he has chosen that for himself. And he has lived Abraham. And you know what excites me? Abraham the elder could have chosen for himself. But may I say, Brother Tim, thank God he did not choose for himself. He let God choose for him. May I say, dear friend, when it comes uh, to the choices uh, of life, may I say, do not make your own choice. Uh, allow God to choose for you. And there, after Lot has, has uh, uh, left and Lot has went in his direction, God speaks uh, unto Abraham and He tells him there, He said, lift up thine eyes. And he lift up his eyes and he begins to look and he begins to be given to, to God given a promise how that he says look northward and look eastward and look southward and look westward and he says in all the land that thou seest to thee will I give it and to thy seed forever. May I say thank God how the people of God have been given of the promise of a country. May I say, if you studied out, before there was ever a nation of Israel, God had given through His servant Abraham, He had given them the promise of a land. A land that floweth with milk and honey. Notice, if you will, there's the promise of this present country. He looks there to Abraham. And he says to Abraham, Abraham, I've got a country for you. I've got a land for you. I've got a place uh, uh, that I want you to dwell and all your inhabitants to dwell. And notice the description of it. It is a land that floweth uh, with milk and honey. May I say thank God when you and I got saved, uh, uh, God did not just sort of cast us out there in the world uh, and tell us uh, how to get out there and earn a meager fare and, and do the best you can and survive with the world and contend with the world. May I say thank God we have a spiritual Canaan uh, in this world that we can join. Uh, There is a spiritual Canaan that flows with milk uh, and honey. Uh, There is the blessings of God in which He has promised uh, that He will bless our country. He will send the early rain. He will send the latter rain. He will drive uh, the enemies out of that land. May I say, we have the promise of a spiritual land while we're here on this earth. But may I say, thank God, not only is there the promise of a present country, thank God there's the promise of a prepared country. Thank God we're not only just to have the promise of a country here, but thank God we have the promise of a country yet to come for the children of God. The Bible tells us there, and I quote the other day in John chapter number 14, where Jesus talks to His disciples. And He says to the disciples, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in Me. For in My Father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto Myself that where I am, there you may be also. Then over in the book of Revelation in chapter number 21, John begins to talk about that city. And he begins to talk about that land, how that it is fairer than day. How he begins to talk that there's no sickness, there's no heartache. I may I say, one of the first things that God is going to do is He's going to wipe away all tears and the remembrance of this past world and this past life will be wiped away. May I say for the people of God, I'm glad God has a a promised country and I'm glad that God in this present world and He has the promise of of a prepared country. I thank God we have a dwelling place as the people of God. 
I don't have to uh, run around uh, uh, living in the environment of this world. Uh, you know the Bible says, I'm in the world, but I'm not of the world. May I say, I believe that there is a spiritual state. There is an opportunity. But may I say, will you say, what are you trying to do, Brother Bob? May I say, I'm enjoying the promise of this present country until ultimately I find myself enjoying the reality of that prepared country. May I say, that's what Abraham did. In the, in, in the book of Hebrews chapter uh, number 11 it says, uh, and he sought for a city whose builder and whose maker was God. Thank God I can live uh, uh, in an atmosphere uh, in this world, uh, a spiritual, uh, a land of blessing uh, until one day I ultimately awake uh, in sinless perfection with a new body in the presence uh, of God Himself in a new world prepared for us. As his children. May I say, as we think about that, we think about this. Well, how do you say, how do you enter this present country? You do it by faith. How do you say, how do you enter into the prepared country? You do it by faith. How do you get to enter in to the, to the promised country? You do it by faith. May I say, you leave Egypt by faith to enter into a present country, a one day a prepared country, and thank God forever to be with God. I'm glad that I have the promise of a country. But may I say, not only do we enjoy the promise of this country, but notice, if you will, the pursuit of this country. I'm talking about this spiritual land, this, this spiritual uh, 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 state of, 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 of milk and honey and blessings from God. A uh, 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 land that, 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 that we find ourselves... Uh, in total satisfaction with. What do we run into in the pursuit of this country? May I say it does not thrill me to have to say this. But may I say when we begin to consider the pursuit of our spiritual Canaan, the sad truth is the closer you get to entering the promised possession the smaller the crowd gets. May I say God has forever had a country prepared for His people. In this world and in the world to come. But as you study the example that we find here in the Word of God, you'll find that as that crowd moves closer to that country, the crowd always gets smaller. May I say, if, you're, if you've got this idea that you're going to enjoy this spiritual Canaan because you're going with the majority, I've got news for you, you're going the wrong way. Because the majority aren't going toward their spiritual Canaan. They're moving away back toward Egypt. May I say, notice if you will, and write the reference down, and you can turn if you'd like to, but notice the pursuit of the rebel. Look there in Numbers chapter number 13 and you'll, you'll notice the story of how that finally they get over there and finally a, a God comes to them and said, hey, you, you've, you've compassed this mountain long enough. It's time to uh, go in and, and it's time to enjoy the land uh, that I prepared. Uh, it's time to you uh, to enjoy this Canaan, enjoy this land here before you leave for a, a promise, a, a possessions in heaven. And, and, and so they say, okay, we're going to send out in verse number 1 and 2, and the Lord spake unto Moses saying, Send thou men that they may search the land of Canaan, which I have given unto the children of Israel. Of every tribe of their fathers shall ye send a man, every one, of, uh, every one a ruler among them. And so he goes around, he begins to choose. He's got 12 representatives for the 12 tribes. And uh, they're sent in, they're to go in, they're to search out the entire land, they're to go in, they're to stay 40 days and 40 nights, uh, they're to bring the fruit uh, of the land back and give a report to the people of God. Over in verse number 27, they come back. And they told him and said, We come into the land whither thou sentest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. 
But notice the next word. Nevertheless, the people that uh, uh, the, uh, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw uh, the children of Anak there. And notice, if you will, down in verse thirty-one, and it says uh, in verse thirty-one, uh, but the men that went up said, uh, with him said, "We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we." And they brought forth an evil report of the land which uh, they have searched uh, unto the children of Israel, saying, "The land which." Uh, uh, we have gone in to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants of thereof. They go in. This is the this is the this is the pursuit of the rebel. Uh, uh, here they are. They're standing on the borders uh, of, of this Canaan. They're standing on the borders uh, of a land that God's promised to them. They're standing on the borders of a land that God said, I'd give you, I'd give you several hundred years ago in the promise to Abraham. Now go in and take it. You know what the rebel says? The rebel said, it's everything you say it is, but we can't have it. And God says, okay, for your unbelief, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to cause everyone from 20 years old and upward to die. Everybody from 20 years old and upward. Now, at this point in time, if you'll do a study in your Bible, Moses is a little over 80 years old. And if we use Moses' age as the average elderly age flowing down to infanthood, brother, uh, uh, brother Tim, and everybody from 20 years old and upwards is going to die, you know what that translates to? Three-fourths of everybody in that crowd is going to die. Can I give you some news? God has promised us as the people of God a land, a spiritual land of blessings where there's milk and there's honey and there's fellowship and there's provisions and there's the kindness of God. God has promised that to us. Can I tell you, we've got enough rebels in the bunch that I believe the majority of them will never go in. But notice what happens. There's not only the pursuit of the rebel, but there's the pursuit of the religious. I'll not turn, but you write the reference down. Numbers chapter number 32, verse 1 through verse number 5. Here they are. They're going along. Now we've got a nation there of 20 years old and under. They've lived for 40 years in the wilderness and they get part of the way over through there and they see a particular land that's bordering the land of Canaan. And this uh, a tribe uh, 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 comes, these two and a half tribes, uh, and they come to Moses and they say to him, Hey, listen, uh, we, we don't want to go in. This land is a land of cattle and we don't want to go in. Uh, let us live on the border. See, religious people say, Hey, I don't want to be all the way out. I don't want to rebel completely on God. I don't want to be perceived as a rebel. I want to be religious. I want to live right on the edge. I don't want to be in, I don't want to be out, but I want to be on the edge. You know, if you figure that out, two and a half tribes equates to one-fifth. Right at one-fifth. Now think about it. Three-fourths died because they brought back an evil report. And now out of the 20% that could go in, a fifth of them don't want to go in. You say, what's your point, Brother Bob? I'm not trying to, to, to discourage, but can I tell you, we've got far more people living outside the borders of our spiritual Canaan. We've got far more people living outside of the blessings of God than we do going in. 
Thank God there's the pursuit of the righteous there in Numbers chapter 14 and verse number 6 through verse number 9. There's two men. There's a man by the name of Joshua and a man by the name of Caleb. And you know what they said? They said God is well able to give it to us. He's promised us in Father Abraham and He's promised us that we can have it. He's brought us out under the blood of the Lamb and He can give us this land. May I say, dear friend, there is the pursuit of this land. Are you pursuing your spiritual king? Are you, are you actively uh, moving forward to possess all your possessions that are yours in the Lord Jesus Christ? You say, well, Brother Bob, what will determine our pursuit? Well, notice, notice the the, 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 the thing that determined the pursuit of the rebel. They were moved by, they were moved by two things. In Numbers chapter number 11 and verse number 4 through 6, you say, what were they moved by? They were moved by their appetites. You know what their appetites were? Leeks, garlic, and the flesh pots of Egypt. You say, what was their problem, Brother Bob? Their problem was they had more of an appetite for the world which is pictured in Egypt than they did for the things of God. You say, Brother Bob, why? Why do we have people occupying this land of blessing? I'll tell you why. They've got a greater appetite for the world. May I say their pursuits are determined by their appetite. May I say their pursuits are determined by their apprehensions. There when those 12 men come by, uh, back from that, that report, uh, 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 the Bible teaches us that, 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 that 10 of them, uh, uh, they make this comment that, that the men say when they come up, uh, we be not able. You say, what is it? In other words, uh, they saw the position of their land in their ability to take it and not God's ability to take it. Can I give you some news? The ability to enjoy the fullness of the Christian life does not rest in you, but it rests in God and His ability. The rebels didn't go in. You say, why, Brother Bob? Because of their appetites and their apprehensions. But what about that religious crowd? What, what determined their pursuit? May I say, notice if you will, and uh, uh, write the reference down, Numbers chapter number 32 and verse number 4. Uh, the Bible says they come to Him, uh, these two and a half tribes, uh, and they say the land is a good land uh, for cattle. Now listen to what they say. And thy servants have cattle. You say, what was their problem? Their problem wasn't appetite. Their problem wasn't apprehension. Their problem was their activities. Write this reference down and, and study it out sometime. Genesis chapter number 46, verse 33 through verse 34. Joseph has brought his father and his brethren down into Egypt. He's going to uh, put them over in the land of Goshen. And he's preparing to introduce uh, his father and his brethren unto Pharaoh and, and uh, 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 present his family. And as he prepares them, he's, uh, he's dressing them, he's, he's uh, 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 getting them ready, and then he gives them a word of counsel. He says, now when you go in there, and they ask you what your occupation is, don't tell them you're a shepherd. You tell them that you tend cattle. Because shepherds and sheep are an abomination to the Egyptians. Now you can read all the way through the Word of God. It's not saying that the Israel didn't ever have cattle. But the majority of what they dealt with were sheep. They were shepherds by occupation. Their activity, all the way through the Word of God. They were shepherds were their activity. But you know what happened? They stayed down there for 400 and some years and they picked up the ways of Egypt and the activities of Egypt. And they never could break from the activities of Egypt. 
You know why a lot of people are religious, but they seem to never enjoy the fullness of God's blessings? They can't get, it's not the appetite, it's not the apprehension. They can't get by the activities of the world. They've lived out there and enjoyed those activities. Uh, They enjoy uh, uh, that mingling with the world. They enjoy those things uh, that that the world has uh, uh, to bring to them. And therefore, they're willing to get right up to the edge. But never go all the way with God. You say, Brother Bob, what? Determined the appetite of the righteous, the Almighty. They saw everything through Him when He said, uh, those uh, 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 Joshua and Caleb said, God is well able. See, the rebel and the religious uh, 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 were, were dominated by self, while the righteous uh, are ruled by the sovereign. May I say, if you're wanting and wondering if the crowd is going to that spiritual Canaan, I've got news for you, they're not. May I say, the closer you get to occupying and enjoying the fullness of everything that God wants you to enjoy in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, the crowd will always get smaller. You'll find yourself in the minority and not the majority. See, the question is not, are you satisfied with getting out of Egypt? But are you looking and longing for Canaan in your life? It's not just have I somehow escaped hell. But are you looking and longing to enjoy the fullness and and the enjoyment of the abundant Christian life that God's God's got a country for you. But notice the third thing, the proof of this country. Now, I want to ask you a question. You know, I made the comment Sunday morning. I found out after 30 some years of preaching that we preach about things that people don't even know and we don't even know. We use terms. We use, we use uh, illustrations and, and people shake their head but they could not define it. They could not tell you what it was. You're here tonight and I could ask you this question. Are you living and enjoying the fullness of Canaan land living? Are you enjoying uh, living uh, in a land that flows with milk and honey? Are you out of the wilderness? Uh, Are you beyond the borders? Are you enjoying Canaan? You say, yes, I am. Then my question to you is, how do you know? You say, well, God's there. God was in the wilderness. You say, uh, God's providing. God provided quail, rod, and manna in the wilderness. You see my point? How, how do you know? How, 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 what, what is the deciding, uh, uh, the, the, the distinguishing factor that reveals uh, 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 where you're living in your Christian experience, uh, whether you're enjoying the bounties of Canaan, or you're on the edge or wandering? In the, how, what determines that? May I say there's a multitude of things, but may I say one area is prevalent. You say, what is it, Brother Bob? If you want to know what country that you find yourself living in, you just determine who's on the offensive and who's on the defensive. You tell me whether you're on the offense or the defense, and I can tell you where you're living. You say, why? Because other than Canaan land living, forever the nation of Israel was always on the defense. They was always fighting off Amalek. They was always fighting off the enemies. But may I say, when they crossed over that Jordan River, walked over and camped in Gilgal, cut away uh, 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 the, the, the circumcising and the cutting away of the flesh, uh, and they begin their conquest, uh, may I say, uh, with the exception of that one sin, they were forever on the offensive, taking territory from from the enemies of God. Can I ask you a question? Are you giving up territory? Do you you find yourself, the enemy is always taking, you you find yourself back on your heels? May I say, if you are, most likely, you're not living in Canaan. 
Because may I say, when you find yourself in Canaan with the spiritual Joshua as your heavenly commander, may I say, you're on the move. You're moving forward. You're taking ground. Jesus said, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He says in Romans chapter number 8, and nay in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him that loved. I like the words of a fellow by the name of Charles Stevens. He used to be the president of Piedmont Bible College. Got a great book out. It's hard to find. It's called From Egypt to Canaan. And he made this comment. He said, it's one thing to own land. It's another thing to move in and possess it. I'm talking about the abundant life tonight. I'm talking about Life in His favor. To whereby we choose to live and please and be obedient to Him. And as we do that, do that, we find ourselves in that state of obedience that we find ourselves living in a land of blessing, a land that flows with milk and honey. But I want you to notice one last thing. Not only do we see the proof of that country, and the pursuit of that country, and the promise of that country. But notice, if you will, the potentate of that country. The country that we find ourselves, the different aspects of where we can live. May I say for those that remained in Egypt, may I say their potentate was Satan. And may I say that potentate generated, uh, uh, his reign was marked by grief. May I say when the children of Israel lived down there in Egypt, a picture of the lost condition, Pharaoh, a picture of Satan was dominant. And you know what he did? He was a heavy taskmaster. And forever and ever he was creating grief in their hearts and their lives. May I say, thank God, uh, not only do we see the potentate of the country of Egypt as Satan uh, and it's it's a reign of grief, But may I say, what about the potentate of the wilderness? That's the rebellious self. In other words, uh, the rebellious self is the one that occupies the throne. The rebellious self determines what we'll do and where we'll go. You know what is the mark of His reign? It's not grief, it's graves. Everywhere you follow those folks through the wilderness, you know how you can trace them? Grave after grave after grave after grave. May I say, when you live in a state of rebellious self, continually spiritual things die in your life. What about those that are on the border? May I say, the religious self is the potentate there. You say, what's his reign marked by? Greed. He he can't never get enough. It was greed that caused them to to live in that land. It was greed that made them make that choice. It was greed that made them want what they want. But what about Canaan? Who's the potentate there? May I say it's the sovereign. And you say, Brother Bob, what's his reign marked by? It's marked by glory. One glorious event, one glorious uh, uh, activity of pursuit, uh, of taking property, of had, having provisions, uh, living in houses they didn't build, enjoying vineyards they didn't plant, occupying and taking herds uh, that were not there. They were theirs because God would give them to. I wonder tonight, are you living in His favor? He has promised us a country. He has promised us a present country. He has promised us a prepared country. For He has forever determined for His people to enjoy a country that flows with milk and honey. And it is ours if we will simply pursue in obedience the will of God for our life. May I say when we know Him as shepherd and sheep and we're allowing Him to lead and guide, can I tell you, Where He's going to lead you to? He's going to lead you to the country. He's going to lead you to a place that's fairer than day. I wonder, are you enjoying not only life in His flock and enjoying companionship? 
Are you enjoying life in His favor? Are you enjoying the country? The spiritual state that He is in that He has prepared for you to enjoy. Would you stand, please? Our gracious and most kind Heavenly Father, we we thank you, Lord, for the privilege and the opportunity to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Lord, I thank you that. You are a God that has forever been prepared for all that we need. You're a God that has prepared a way in our salvation. You're a God that has prepared a way in our sanctification. Lord, You're a God that has forever been ready to meet every need that we have as Your children. Lord, I pray tonight that somehow that there would be within our bosom a hunger and a desire for the prepared country that You have for us. How that we can enjoy a land here until ultimately arrive in the country over there. Lord, help us to have the right kind of thirst and desire seeking God's leadership and will in our life. And Lord, we'll love You and thank You and praise You for all that You're doing. For we ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. In just a moment, our brother's going to give us a verse of invitation and we'll sing. Can I ask you a question? Are you tired of having the enemy take everything away? Are you tired of living on the edge when you know that you'd live in victory and in blessings in the Lord Jesus Christ? May I say, it's yours to enjoy tonight if you want it. You simply need but to pursue and be obedient to enjoy His favor in His country. What number, my dear friend? 304. As our brother begins to lead us in a few verses of invitation, as God speaks to your heart, we invite you to come. As the pastor comes, continue the invitation. Would you come? As God speaks to your heart, would you come? sing one more verse, but uh, I appreciate the great preaching tonight, and uh, the Lord only leads to one place, doesn't He? He's only leading us to one place, and that's to live in the land that He prepared for us, the only place He wants us to live, and uh, tonight, you know, I just thought, or uh, our own heart and life, where are we? Are we still wandering around in the wilderness, or are we living on the edge or are we living in that land that He promised us? That's where we want to. That's where we ought to want to be. And uh, if we do want to be there, and we know we're not, then we just simply need to. We need to trust Him that He can take us there, and uh, ask Him to lead us, and submit and surrender to obey Him, and follow Him. And I know that He'll help us to enter in. So tonight, we just want to sing one more verse, and we just want to encourage you tonight. Where are you in your spiritual life? And uh, if you're anywhere but pursuing Him and following Him and looking to be in that land, then uh, we, need to, we need to get out of the wilderness and step over the line and be all the way in, not live on the edge.
So we're going to sing that last verse tonight. Maybe you need to come and just say, Lord, lead me and guide me. I want to follow you. I want to live where you want me to and be what you want me to be. Let's sing that second verse. That'll be our last verse unless you come tonight. <clears throat> blessed to be here tonight. Thank the Lord for the good services and preaching and everything that God's blessed us with today. Thank the Lord for it. And I hope you'll be praying about tomorrow. And I hope everybody will invite somebody to the meeting tomorrow evening and uh, 7 o'clock again tomorrow night. Be right here. And, and we're looking forward to having another uh, good time uh, here this uh, in, uh, in this meeting. And pray for Brother Sanders. God will continue using him. And uh, thank the Lord for how God's blessed him and using him, giving him direction here. And I know he wants to help our hearts and lives in church. So we're thankful for it. And so we hope you'll just be busy in prayer and inviting people to come tomorrow uh, throughout the day. But we want to just be dismissed tonight, have a word of prayer together. And uh, just thank the Lord for what he's done tonight in our hearts and lives. So let's look to him. Father, we are thankful for your goodness. We thank you for, uh, Lord, the opportunity we have tonight to come and to be in the house of the Lord. I think back, God, throughout my life that, Lord, how many wonderful things you've done, Lord, in a service like this service, through the preaching of the Word of God, through, Lord, the ministry of music, and, uh, Lord, through, uh, God, the encouragement of brothers and sisters in Christ. God, thank you for your uh, unrelenting pursuit of my heart and life. And, uh, Lord, we're thankful for it. God, we just pray tonight now that you'll continue to work throughout this week. Uh, Lord, I pray tonight now, Lord, that you would uh, help each one of us, God, just to take time this evening. And, Lord, may these truths not be very far from our mind and heart. And, Lord, we don't want to be wandering in the wilderness. Uh, Lord, uh, living lives that are uh, filled with unbelief. Uh, Lord, uh, a life that's uh, not pleasing to you and not glorifying to you, not fulfilling, Lord, the purpose that you saved us for. Uh, Lord, in fact, being a stumbling block to what you want to do, God, help us to get out of the wilderness and move forward and, Lord, live by faith. And God, help us not to live on the edge but be all the way in, Lord, in what you want to do in our hearts and lives, living where you want us to live. And, uh, Lord, we just pray tonight now you deal with each of our hearts about these things. And, Lord, may we be obedient people to you. And, God, may we just hunger and desire and thirst, Lord, not for the things of the world or uh, the temporary satisfaction of the flesh. But, Lord, may we just hunger and thirst, God, for your presence to be manifested and, Lord, just to be enjoyed in our lives. So we just pray now tonight. You'd bless. May tomorrow, God, be a day where we are given opportunity, God. May we take that opportunity to speak to others, invite people to come, make a call, make a visit, stop, see someone. And, Lord, we just pray that, Father, you'll just bless tomorrow evening as well. And, Lord, we thank you for this evening. God bless everyone here tonight. Thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen.